Hey everyone, welcome to Miniature Painting 101, uh, my new Tuesday video series where I will be covering how to paint a miniature through all the steps of preparation, um, including cleaning the model, removing it from its sprues, uh, possibly pinning, through the entire painting process, um, base coats, layers, shades, uh, color matching, all the way to post painting, such as basing, varnishes, uh, how to protect your miniatures, etc. So welcome to part three of this series where I will be going over a bit about the brushes that you might use when painting miniatures. So I will be going over first the main parts of a paintbrush which will uh, assist in later on when we're talking about maintenance. Second, uh, since there are so many companies out there, I'd rather just focus on the types of paintbrushes, primarily natural bristles versus synthetic bristles. Third, uh, the sizes and types of brushes that you might use while painting. And fourth, uh, brush care to ensure that your brushes last as long as possible. So first I'll go over the parts of a paintbrush. Essentially, the three main components of any paintbrush are first, the handle, the part of the paintbrush where you grip when painting, uh, pretty straightforward. Second, the ferrule, um, the metallic area that joins the handle and uh, holds all the bristles or the parts that you use to paint. And finally, the bristles, the actual parts of the brush that have the paint and that you use to paint the surface of anything, whether it be a model or a wall or anything that you want to paint. As there are so many good companies out there that produce paintbrushes for miniature painting, I'd rather just cover um, the types, the two standard types of brushes, or at least the types of bristles that are found in these brushes that you might use when painting miniatures. The first type is synthetic. Um, as you can notice by this paintbrush, the white bristles at the very end, uh, they are not real or not naturally found in nature. Um, an example of a synthetic uh, type of bristle is Taclon, which you find in usually the middle end paintbrushes, and it's a very strong polyester. Some pros of using synthetic brushes are, first of all, they tend to be much cheaper than natural brushes, and second, um, you can use them typically, they're great for jobs that involve a lot of wear on your brush, such as base coating or dry brushing where you can wear on them without worrying about the detail. Uh, some of the cons with these brushes, as I mentioned, they do not keep their shape very long. And they tend to not last as long as natural uh, bristles on brushes. The other type of bristle that you'll commonly find on paintbrushes are what are defined as natural bristles. And these are typically from the hairs or furs of animals. For example, Many of the uh, higher-end paintbrushes are made from sable, uh, which is a small mammal. Others are made from hog hair. Some advantages to using uh, natural bristles are that they tend to keep their shape much longer than synthetic, and they can be shaped to a finer point, which as I just mentioned, will last you a lot longer. Therefore, they tend to be used for much finer detailed uh, jobs. However, the main problem with using natural ones is that they tend to be a lot more expensive. Some can run as high as 40, 50, I've seen some as high as $60 per paintbrush for very nice high quality uh, sable paintbrushes. Therefore I do not recommend using them um, unless you're very serious about your hobby. And now I'm just going to cover a little bit about brush sizes and shapes. Um, but just to give you a heads up, most brushes can be used for most types of jobs, depending on the size. So first, we have the base coating brushes, which are uh, much larger in size than the other types of brushes, and they tend to be just used to cover your model 
with the base colors. Such as if you're painting an ultramarine, you'd be wanting to use this brush just to give your model a very good coverage of a dark blue, which you'll later go over with more colors. Next, we have brushes which are typically called detailed brushes. These are used to paint much smaller areas such as the face of a model. And finally, there is what are called fine detailed brushes. These are called like size zero, size double zero, size triple zero. They're used to paint very, very small parts of the model such as the eyes, um, the teeth, the mouth, very, very detailed areas of these models. If you are painting primarily smaller models, uh, such as infantry, I recommend starting off with at least one larger of these base brushes, one details brush for their faces and smaller areas, and at least one of these fine detailed brushes. However, if you're painting other models, such as tanks for example, you will need probably other paint brushes. For example, this large flat brush is ideal if you're painting tanks. Um, you can use it to do the base coating of the tank or to do the dry brushing of the tank. Um, if you're painting larger models, I definitely recommend getting at least one, maybe two of these brushes. Next, we have our stippling brushes, which are uh, domed shaped and used to produce a stippling effect. For example, if you want to paint rust, on your tanks or on your trucks, a stippling brush is a great addition. I will be showing you how to do stippling in future videos. Then there are the dry brushes, or brushes that can be used for dry brushing. These brushes tend to have very, very flat ends. Uh, that way when you're dry brushing along the surface, it doesn't get into the recesses, it just goes along the surface. These are the brushes that tend to get worn out the quickest and therefore it's always good to do maintenance on them, which I will be going over in just a moment. And lastly, we have the fan brush. Um, these brushes I've seen by many artists being used uh, for washes. They tend to soak up a lot of wash or shading and uh, gives great application over the model. That is a little bit about some of the main brushes that you may use for miniature painting. However, that is just a subset. There are some more out there. What I do recommend is starting off with a small group of paint brushes, become familiar with them and comfortable with them, and then work your way towards new paint brushes depending on what type of miniatures you're painting. So now I'm gonna cover um, some very easy ways to take care of your brushes that they last you as long as possible and give you the best results. So let's say you just went and picked up this brand new paintbrush. As the old saying goes, you can't have your brush and use it too. And despite your best efforts, eventually your paintbrush might end up looking like this one. However, there are a few easy steps that you can take which will prolong the process as much as possible and lead to the longest lasting brush life that you can possibly have with the best point as long as possible. The first step is use clean water every time you start to paint and change your water frequently. If you use water that is old and full of paint particles, um, when you clean your brush with it, it they're not going to be fully cleaned and this extra paint is going to stay in the brush and end up hardening it, as well as possibly manipulate the bristles in a way that you don't want and it will lose its shape. So, change your water often. The second important step is what I call protecting the ferrule of the paintbrush. Do not let paint like this dry on the ferrule, especially where the ferrule and the bristles attach. That is not a good idea. What happens is paint gets in there and dries and what ends up doing is controlling where each bristle is facing. And this can definitely and very easily ruin the shape um, of your brush as well as make it much more difficult to use and to clean. For example, this brush right here, which as you can see my finger pointing to, it has a lot of paint dried over the ferrule 
and now it would be very hard to change the shape of this brush. However, this problem can be quickly remedied before you let the paint dry by just quickly wiping off excess paint with a paper towel from the ferrule every time you paint. After cleaning your brush in your clean water, do not let your brushes sit in the water for prolonged periods of time. This will result in very quickly your brushes becoming bent and warped. So unless you specifically want that to happen, do not leave them in the water for a long time. Another potentially important step is just simply washing your brushes uh, by rinsing them under warm water uh, in the tap after you're done with them. A great product which I actually highly rec recommend to you guys if you want to help save your brushes is to use brush cleaner such as this master's brush cleaner and preserver. After rinsing your brush in warm water all you do is build up a layer of this cleaner on your brush and then work it into a lather in your hand or your arm and then work the lather into the brush. When you feel it's clean Simply, once again, rinse it with warm water. And what's really cool about this product is after you've cleaned it, you can repeat this process one more time, but instead of rinsing off the lather, you just build the lather into the brush and then shape the brush however you wish, and then let it dry like that. The soap will actually harden inside the brush and keep these bristles uh, the way that you shaped it, so it helps keep the permanent shape of the brush. And finally, when your paintbrushes are all clean and dry, remember to store them in an area, like this holder, a proper area where they don't touch anything when drying. If you leave a paintbrush against a surface when it's drying, it'll actually bend and then stay bent in the same direction as it was drying. So if you leave it bent on a weird shape on a paper towel, for example, you're going to ruin the shape of your brush. So that concludes part three, all about the brushes that you might use when painting miniatures. I really hope you liked this uh, video and I hope you learned a little bit. Um, if you feel like I missed anything, feel free to leave it in the comment section below and stay tuned for part four. So thank you to all you awesome people once again for watching and subscribing to my videos. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will hope to continue to make this series. Uh, to anybody who watched it, please leave a comment if you think I missed anything in the comment section below. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so. Thank you once again, and until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting.